It's a pleasure to be here today to speak about progress in brain-computer interfaces and emerging technology at the forefront of modern medicine and artificial intelligence. Thank you very much for having me, and particularly it's a pleasure to be here in the UAE where there's such a strong interest in technology innovation and the knowledge economy, and in a year when we're so interested in the potential of artificial intelligence. We're at a perfect time and place to be preparing for the next generation of the user interface in which human brain communicates seamlessly, intuitively, and directly with artificial intelligence. Brain-computer interfaces enable direct communication between the human brain and artificial intelligence. This technology is just becoming available today. It represents an emerging technology sector that will profoundly imp impact medicine and society in the years ahead, and it will change the ways in which humans interact with the digital world. Today, brain-computer interfaces are beginning to bring life-changing treatment options to people who suffer from currently untreatable neurological disorders, such as paralysis, due to spinal cord injury, certain forms of stroke, and some neurodegenerative diseases. These systems enable paralyzed people to regain intuitive control over computer interfaces, and they enable patients who cannot speak to communicate just by thinking, restoring independence, dignity, self-sufficiency, and quality of life. I'm a neurosurgeon and an electrical engineer, and I've dedicated my professional career over the last 20 years to developing brain-computer interfaces in order to treat neurological disorders. I was one of the co-founders of Neuralink and subsequently co-founded Precision Neuroscience, where I'm currently the chief science officer. What is a brain-computer interface? Brain-computer interfaces are, are systems that convert biological neural signals into digital bits, and then use machine learning to decode these digitized neural signals into a form that a computer or another human can intuitively understand. The human brain is both biological and electrical in nature. When biological brain signals are converted into digital bits, the resulting data can be used to enable instantaneous communication between the human brain and high-powered computing systems. We can think of a brain-computer interface as having three components. The first is a sensor or electrode array that makes contact with the brain. The second is a microelectronics package that amplifies, digitizes, and processes the neural signals. And the third component is an artificial intelligence-based software layer that decodes the digitized neural signals. What factors are accelerating progress in brain-computer interfaces today? The emergence of an industry around brain-computer interfaces coincided with commercial developments in modern machine learning because advances in artificial intelligence were really the final unlocking step, gating the transition between brain-computer interfaces transitioning from academic science, the realm of scientific feasibility and proof of principle, into industry, the productization of technology and uh, making it into a reliable product that can be used for patients. There have been, there's been progress in a number of key market sectors that have really enabled this technology to progress. Uh, I would highlight three of them. Microfabrication for the development of advanced electrode arrays for neural interfaces, microelectronics for processing and wireless transmission of the neural signals, and regulation and regulatory guidance uh, developed primarily by the US FDA. We can measure progress, as, as shown here, in brain-computer interfaces by tracking the bandwidth of data that can be transmitted from the human brain that has been possible over time. The ability of digital systems to communicate seamlessly with the human brain is tightly linked to the bandwidth of the communication channel that's provided by the brain-computer interface. The highest performing brain-computer interfaces are direct physical interactions, physical interfaces with the brain itself, based on arrays of tiny electrodes. I'll show you some examples in a few minutes. Some, such as those produced by companies such as BlackRock, Paradromics, and Neuralink, penetrate into the brain. Those produced by precision neuroscience, shown at the top, uh, coat the surface of the brain without penetrating and without damaging the brain. The bandwidth of the interface is essentially proportional to the total number of microelectrodes, and this number has been growing exponentially, due in part to the semiconductor manufacturing techniques that we now use to manufacture these electrode arrays. It's a kind of Moore's law for applied neurotechnology. As in other specialized areas of artificial intelligence, specialized hardware is required nowadays. For brain-computer interfaces, the data bottleneck is at the analog front end, the physical interface with the brain itself. 
manufacturing a highly stable solid state interface with the sensitive biological tissue of the human brain is a challenging problem. At Precision Neuroscience, we operate our own microfabrication facility now, located in Dallas, using semiconductor manufacturing technologies to produce microelectrodes on extremely thin films under human implant grade quality control conditions. The result is an integrated system implanted into the body that records signals from the human brain and wirelessly transmits them to communicate with external computer systems. I would like to show you what kinds of insights are now possible with these kinds of systems. For the first time, perhaps in human history, we can actually see human thought in real time. Here, you're seeing an image of a portion of the brain surface covered by an electrode array containing 1,024 tiny electrodes. The voltage on each electrode is rendered in a color that corresponds to the amplitude of the voltage. The precision cortical interface provides this information in real time, but here I've slowed it down because electrical signals propagate over the brain surface on time scales that are much faster than even the refresh rate of a conventional screen. The electrodes here are 50 microns in diameter, and they're separated by 400 thousandths of a millimeter. These patterns of electrical activity are the physical manifestations of thought, and so you are watching thoughts propagate over the brain surface at a resolution higher than has ever been seen before. What are the intuitive benchmarks for performance of brain-computer interfaces? This is a very exciting year. One important early application of brain-computer interfaces is the ability to provide thought-based communication. For patients who have lost the ability to speak, such as from a stroke or neurodegenerative disease, this is a life-altering functionality. On an intuitive level, of course, this functionality also has clear implications for the future of the user interface. Until recently, the most advanced brain-computer interfaces enabled typing only at a rate of a few words per minute. By comparison, a grade school student can write at five to 10 words per minute, and eye-tracking interfaces, not an implant, can communicate at similar rates. But as of 2023, the most advanced brain-computer interfaces enable patients who cannot speak to communicate at 60 to 80 words per minute, an order of magnitude faster than what was possible even five years ago. This is comparable to the speed at which we type and approaching the speed of natural human speech, which reaches 150 to 200 words per minute. And of course, on some level, this is close to the speed of human thought. Thinking beyond medicine, brain-computer interfaces have the potential to transform the nature of the user interfaces in other areas of technology. Over the last half century, each major paradigm shift in computing has been associated with a change in the nature of the user interface. Early mainframes had their punch cards, personal computers had the keyboard and ultimately the mouse, portable computing had the laptop and the notebook, and later streamlined interfaces were developed for the smartphone, including gestural and voice-based interfaces like we know today. And wearables and pervasive computing have given rise to another type of neural interface, of user interface. But in the emerging age of artificial intelligence, perhaps the natural interface will become the direct brain-to-computer interface. I would like to show there are millions video of people who have lost the ability to move and to speak as a result of neurological injuries, such as stroke, spinal cord injury, and ALS. What would it take to restore their movement, to give them back their voices? Precision is about building a new technology that will allow us to interface with the brain in ways that have never before been possible. Brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs, create a direct communication pathway between the electrical activity of the brain and a computer. The brain is an electrical organ, so when we build a brain-computer interface, it harnesses the electrical nature of the brain to communicate with the outside world. We have developed the Layer 7 cortical interface, which is the highest bandwidth link between computers and the human brain that's ever been created. This allows people, through thought alone, to operate a computer, to communicate. This is real. This is not science fiction. The first time we placed that array on, and you could just see the electrical activity just washing over the surface of the brain, I thought to myself, gosh, I'm actually watching the brain think. in my junior year and our car got hit by a drunk driver. I came to learn that I actually suffered a spinal cord injury. 
Having access to a technology like BCI gives me a hope of living a life that is more independent. Precision is really poised to bring tremendous hope to millions of people. When we started the company, Ben told us his vision has always been to push this into clinical practice. Ben is the intellectual architect of the system that we're building at Precision. He's a neurosurgeon, so has deep understanding of and respect for the anatomy that we're dealing with. But he also has an engineer's background, both of which are critical to building a BCI system. The traditional methods of placing electrodes painted on the brain usually require making a hole in the skull. This is not an appealing prospect for most people. The micro slit insertion technique was invented by Ben and that enables us to deploy thousands of electrodes in a way that is minimally invasive. When we started Precision, there was a view that you needed to penetrate the brain in order to build a powerful BCI system. Even the smallest BCI electrodes that are out there do destroy some neurons when they're stuck in the brain. And Ben's very firm conviction was that that was wrong. The layer 7 cortical interface is embedded in thin film that coats the surface of the brain without penetrating the brain. It is a fraction of the diameter of human hair, and that fundamentally allows us to generate a very high bandwidth interface with the brain without doing any damage, and in a way that could be potentially reversible and even upgraded. The standard of care in neurosurgical practice is to use four or eight contacts. The Layer 7 device has 1,024 contacts, so over 250 times the spatial resolution. And that's like comparing a movie taken using hand-cranked recorders and bringing it to the world of 4K. You could literally begin to see the words as the patient was speaking them and form various patterns of electrical activity in the brain. It's an enormous amount of data that's coming off of these arrays, and it's really artificial intelligence-driven software that makes sense of it. We're using machine learning architectures and artificial intelligence that were inspired by the brain to decode the brain's own language. And in order to build a highly functional communication channel between the brain and artificial intelligence, you need a lot of data. Already in our first five patients, we started to collect that data, and over the next year, we'll be scaling up that data collection. We're now in the process of ramping up to three sites from one. In just over two years, we went from funding to having a device on the brain of a human patient. Other companies in this space that are six, seven, eight years old have yet to do a human implant. We've been able to move really quickly now that our arrays are manufactured in a facility that is owned and controlled by Precision Neuroscience. Supply chains themselves can be quite fragile, so having the plant here in the United States gives us the greatest degree of control and confidence. This facility is particularly unique because we have a quality system that's specifically related to biomedical devices. We need increased control over this process and increased oversight in order to mitigate any safety concerns for patients. We're really the only people on Earth that can make a device like this. We've been able to recruit just incredible talent. The team is now 50 people. I spent six years at Google. Apple. I used to work at The New Yorker. Before Precision, I worked at Neuralink. Valencia Technologies. Postdoc at Stanford. I used to work at Neuralink. Because our system is reversible, we are able to access the 510K pathway, which is the most rapid pathway to clinical approval through the FDA. This gets us into market, generating revenue, and it starts to generate the high-resolution neural data repository that's really gonna drive our algorithms. The initial use case for the precision system will be to restore function for paralyzed people. Beyond that, the two applications that we're very excited about are stroke rehabilitation and refractory depression. In coming decades, we do see the possibility for this to be more of a general use technology. It's possible that this is a new frontier in how human beings and computers will interact. Our goal is to help as many people as possible, and we think this technology that we're developing could ultimately have an impact not on tens or hundreds or thousands of patients, but many millions. Thank you.